There is an area in your game where if the player goes inside that area, something happens. Something happens. Here's the player. And the player goes inside this area. Something happens when the player touches this area. And it's an invisible area. The player can't see it's there. You just want some kind of game event to happen when the player goes in. For example, an ominous door opens. Or maybe some character in the game says, watch out for that hole. Or maybe the character has gotten to the end of the level and wins the game when he steps into this area. Or maybe the player has a flag and he goes to the capture zone. So the player captures the flag when he walks in that area. In all of these cases, oops, my pen, the, this area is called a trigger. Because it triggers some event. And we want so that the player, when the player steps into this trigger area, uh, we can detect that that has happened and we can fire off this event. So here's the thing, both of these areas, both the trigger and the player are represented as axis aligned bounding boxes, which I've already covered in a previous video. If you remember, we used axis aligned bounding boxes to intersect a line and a box. We did an intersection of a line and a box. That was a really fun video, I thought. So now we're going to see, this is basically the intersection of two axis aligned bounding box. So let's study this and see how it works. Let's say here's one box and here's another. We want to see whether or not they intersect. Well, if we look just dimension by dimension, let's look at this one dimension right here. We can kind of see that there's an overlap in this dimension, right? The this is this is the y dimension here, and the bo this box juts up in the y dimension, and this box juts down in the y dimension. If you're looking only from the side, from this direction, it kind of looks like the boxes overlap. Whereas from the other dimension, there's no overlap at all. There's no overlap at all. So it turns out the rule is that the boxes have to overlap in all dimensions in order for them to intersect. So let's clear these lines away and we'll see what I mean. Draw one more box and this box overlaps with the blue box in all dimensions. It overlaps here and it overlaps here and it intersects. So that's our clue. That's our clue. So let's develop an algorithm now. Um, but first we're going to have to give some names here. This will be box A. This will be box B. This is a min and a max. Max. Min and a max. These are for the y dimensions and these are for the x dimension. And we can see that if, that if the min of one box is bigger than the max of the other box, then there's no overlap. Therefore, there's no intersection. So let's start writing our algorithm here. If, well, first, first of all, sorry, I'm skipping a step here. We have to say for every dimension, for every dimension, because we want to do this for all dimensions. If we're in 2D, we want to do it for both 2D dimensions, X and Y. If we're in 3D, we have to do it for all dimensions, X, Y, and Z. For every dimension, if box A dot min is greater than B max, so if this is the exact situation we have right here, the min of this box is bigger than the max of that box. So we're going to return false. We know that there is no intersection in this case because there's no overlap in this case. And let's flip it the other way around. If a dot max, if it's the other way around and, and the boxes were in the opposite order, then we just have to reverse this, uh, this test. If it's less than b dot min, then return false. So if there is no overlap in any of the three dimensions, we're going to end up returning false here. So we're done with this algorithm. Let's go over the code and see it in action. So here we built an AABB intersection game, and here's how we're going to use it. 
if if the, there's an intersection between the trigger and the player, then we're going to turn the player red. This is the color for red. Red, green, blue, right? 1.2.1. So the player's going to be overwhelmingly red. Whereas otherwise, they'll just be normal colored. So let's take a look and see how that works in game before we implement it. This is my trigger area. If I step inside this area, then I should turn red. I haven't implemented the code yet, so I'm not turning red. But in the game, this would be like the area that you step into in order to win the game or something of that nature. So let's do this. Here's our algorithm. First, let's loop over every dimension in the game. If you have a two dimensional game, this would say two instead of three. Now, if a min, and then we have to get the part of the vector that goes in this dimension, is greater than b max, part of the vector that goes in this dimension, then we return false. In other words, if there's no overlap, then we return false. And same thing over here, except we switch max and min. Make this guy less than. Really simple to implement. Now, if there's absolutely no, um, if there's absolutely no non-overlapping parts, then we'll get down here, and then we should be true. Everything is overlapping. Every dimension is overlapping, and so we return true because we're intersecting. That's it. Press play. Run the game. And now we see that bam, we're red. Bam. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. So this works just fine. So we're going to continue in this vein for the next few uh, videos doing intersections. We're going to develop this theme. It's going to be great, guys. The end.